Beyond building 3D scenes, Tilbrush can be an insanely powerful skybox generator. A skybox is a 360 image that we use in game engines like Unity and Unreal to simulate the feeling that our scenes are larger than they really are. Almost all of your favorite games use skyboxes to display things like clouds, stars, mountains, and anything that's too far away to reach. In Tiltbrush, as long as we're painting things beyond what I call the parallax zone, we can export what we make into a skybox, yet visually our scene will look exactly the same in VR. And so, we'll be able to delete the brush strokes that make up our background scene, which frees up all of that processing power to build the foreground elements. This is liberating for several reasons, but mostly because if all the background brush strokes are destined to be exported as a flat image, we could theoretically use as many brush strokes as we want to make a skybox without worrying about efficiency. Before we get into how to export our scenes as a skybox, we'll learn a bit about shading and how to make illustrative mountains like these. But in order to do this, you'll need to unlock your world skill, like I demonstrated in the beginning of this video. To start designing our mountains, we need to first create a ground plane. To do that, we're going to zoom the world all the way down and then open up the guides menu. Then we're just going to make a simple cube guide and stretch it out. We want it to be the same size as this disk here. Now I'll just grab it from here, I'll press this lock button on the controller hand and bring it right below the home setting and pull the trigger to lock it into place. So all I'm going to do is trace this outer circle of the standard map. So now when I reset back to home and turn off the guide and go to our environment settings and change it to the white scene, we see that the mountains are gone and now we have the ground landscape. So the reason we needed to trace that circle is because everything beyond this circle is what I call the no parallax zone. That means if I draw two objects that are right behind each other and go back to the home position, you don't see these two objects move behind each other when you move your head. So this is in contrast to drawing an object that's right in front of you. If I draw these two objects and move back and forth, I can see the object behind the first one move side to side. So it's obvious that they're 3D shapes. What that ultimately means is that everything that's beyond this point is so far away that our eyes compress it visually, so it could be a 2D image. And that's why everything beyond that point can be exported as a skybox. So to make our scene, we're going to use a perspective line to just trace out where our mountain landscape is going to be. So first thing we do is draw out our perspective line with our straight edge tool and the spikes brush. So I'll draw this out to the center and reset back to home. So now when we reset, we can grab this stroke and bring it to our face. And then we're just going to scale it up so it reaches far beyond our map. And now I can just hold it to my face and move it around our map. And everywhere I press the clone button, I'll make an annotation of where to draw the mountains. So I'll just draw out our first mountain landscape. Not being extremely precise, but it doesn't really matter for this. We just want to get a sense of how this mountain is going to move up and down. And then finally, we'll connect it back to the first one. So this is going to look a little confusing, but when I scale the map down, we can see we have perspective lines that stretch out throughout the entire map. And so if we just go turn off our straight edge tool and grab the matte hall brush, I can go like a foot out from the center circle and draw our furthest mountain. All I have to do is just trace our perspective lines. So now back at the home position, we can see that the mountains we made completely line up with those perspective lines. So now we're going to delete these perspective lines and leave one for ourselves to use again. We'll holster our perspective line for now, and we want to change the lighting in here because we can see that the mountains have a lot of shading on them, and it's very clear that they're not real mountains. And that's because we use the matte hall brush. But what we want to actually use um, is the aesthetic of the unlit hall brush. What's nice about this, though, is that we have the option to see it's lit if we want. So to visually see the matte hall brush as unlit, we just need to turn our lights off and set our fill light to white. And now it looks exactly like the unlit brush. 
We also don't want to be worrying about color yet, so we're going to set our fog to about 1%. So now we can grab our perspective line and draw out our second mountain. So we want this mountain landscape to be below the first one for the most part. So I'll just go in here and start sketching that out. And there we go. So with the same color, we'll paint a new mountain layer by following the new perspective lines. Now with two layers of mountains in place, we'll grab the perspective line and start annotating the third layer. This one is going to be a lot lower than the last one. And now we just need to fill this one out. And now we have our full 360 mountain landscape where each layer of the mountains are visible because we use the perspective lines to design them from the home position. So before we start adding detail, we need to set the color for each layer of these mountains. To figure that out, we can play with the fog and the sky to design what colors we want. So I'm going to go simple and just make a blue sky, keep the horizon white, and then I'll customize the fog color until I find something that feels right. So now that we've used the fog to choose what colors we want in the mountain, we have to capture those colors somehow. You could either take a picture of your scene and re-import that picture back into Tiltbrush so you can grab colors from it, or you could just line it up by eye. I'm just going to try to do it by eye since that's much quicker. And it doesn't have to be exactly what you see. So I'm just going to try to get the hue generally right. I'll make it a little bit darker than it's actually showing. So I'll start with that, and then I want to make it slightly brighter and a little bit desaturated, because fog usually desaturates color. And then I'll make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more desaturated for the last layer. Now I can just attach this to my hand, zoom the world down, and turn our fog off so we can see what we're doing. So all I have to do is pick our first color, turn our recolor tool on, and then just recolor the first batch. Make sure you get everything, go to your second color, and then recolor the second layer. And then lastly, you do the final layer with the third color. When we go home, we can now see that without the fog on, we can see our mountains in this layered view. The ground is a little hard to see because it's the same color as the first layer, so I'll just recolor it as a slightly darker color. Now where we go from here is completely up to us. What I'm going to do is add a bit more detail to each one of these mountains. So I'll just pull the color from each layer and then start drawing random lines. So at this point in the process, before I go any further, I want to add a fourth layer of mountains right in front of the last one. And this time, instead of trying to use the perspective lines, I'm just going to do it by eye. We don't need that much. I just want one bump that looks good from um, the home position. So we can see that even without the perspective lines, it's pretty easy to tell how to make this layer so it's below the main mountain line. Now that we have the silhouettes of our mountains in place, it could take between 30 minutes to 4 hours to add all the shading details to them. I decided to go the 4 hour route so you could see how far you could take that detail. But most of the time, a minimalistic approach to tilt brush works best. So when you're making your first skybox, don't spend more than 30 minutes adding your shading detail. You don't need to make it as detailed as I'm about to make it. Before we start adding any more detail to the scene, we need to determine where the sun's going to be. So where's our main light source in the scene? And that will determine how we will shade these mountains. So I'll grab our perspective line, and go back to the home position, and let's look around in the sky for where the best spot for the sun would be. 
I preferably would want it to be in one of these valleys, so it's kind of cupped by the valley. But this one in the front seems to be the best position, so I'm just going to look around in the sky and just place it right about there. So now we can scale down, go to the light tool or the light brush, set it all the way to a bright yellow and we're just going to draw a circle. So now when we go down we can see that we have the sun in the spot that we chose and now we know where to draw our shading. Shading a mountain is pretty simple. All you have to do is pull the color from the mountain and then you need to make it one color that's slightly brighter than it. Draw that out and then you need to make one color that's slightly darker than that and a little bit more saturated like this. Now that we have these examples of these colors we can just put them off to the side for us to pull color from later and we're just going to grab the color from the brighter one and start pulling out details on the side of this mountain. We're drawing it here because the sun is right there so we know light is hitting this part of the mountain. But the light is on that side so it's not going to be hitting down here. It's only going to be hitting the edge of this mountain. And we'll do the same for here but since the sun is more on the left side of this mountain we're going to draw it on the left side. And this is a pretty imprecise process. You don't have to be very picky about it. It can be kind of dirty because you're trying to simulate all the ridges in the mountain itself. So if there is a bunch of holes and dots, that's actually better. It looks more detailed. So let's go home and see how this looks. And right away, we're starting to get some realism. Now what's holding this back is a lack of shadows. We have the lit side, but we don't have any shadows um, down here or on the other side of the mountain. So we're just going to pull those down into this. So immediately these colors seem too dark to me, so I need to make a color that's slightly brighter than the one I chose. So I'll undo everything I just did. I'll choose our original color and I'll try to make something that's just slightly darker. That's probably better. We don't want to be too contrasty here. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's much more realistic. So now that we know these colors work, we can fill this out for the whole mountain. So since the sun is over here, we can see that it's now hitting the front of these mountains. So while we only did the edge of these, we're now going to have to add some light to the front of these. For this mountain in particular, the sun is hitting it directly, and so this is going to need a lot of this secondary color right in the front. And now over here we're starting to switch sides because the sun is on this side of the mountain. So now we need to light it over here. And again, this is really imprecise work. We're just trying to get the general idea of lighting in place. Once we have this first round of lighting in, the other layers are going to be much easier to accomplish because we'll have these placeholders that we can look at from these mountains. So now we can start adding more dynamic range to these mountains. So I want to add a slightly brighter color here and a slightly darker color here. So I'll grab the color from the brightest and I'll make a brighter color. And I'll start accenting the edge of this mountain where it's getting the most sunlight. And now we'll do the same thing for this side. We'll pull the darkest color and then make it slightly darker. I also want to add some soft highlighter right 
behind the mountain landscape so we can get more of this horizon glow. And then we can add some right in front of the mountains as well as if there's some kind of mist at the bottom of them. If we really want to accent that the sun is coming through this valley, we could do an extra stroke right here. And we could do the same on the side of the mountain. Now it's just a matter of repeating the same process of grabbing a slightly brighter color and slightly darker color and drawing it on the appropriate sides of the mountains for each layer of these mountains. And so we need one for all four of these. So this is going to be a really long video to watch if you watch it in normal time. So I'm just going to time lapse through this whole thing. Now that our mountain range is complete, we're ready to bring it into Unity to create a skybox. Before we go in, we want to just make sure that there's no other objects in the foreground because this could create some artifacts in the skybox export. So on the surface, it looks like everything is beyond the no parallax zone and we don't have any bloom special effects. If you want to check to see if you've used any brushes that won't export, you just go to settings and then set your visual quality down to zero. If this still looks the same at zero, we're ready to go. So to export, we have to go down to our sketchbook and say upload, upload. So now this is going to upload our sketch to Poly, which we can then view in our web browser. It by default is set to public, so we just have to go in and set it to unlisted, then give it a name so we can find it easily when we go into Unity. Once you can confirm that your mountain landscape is in Poly online, then we can close down Tilt Brush and open up Unity. So in Unity, I've done this a few times, I'm going to make a new project. Just make sure you have 3D selected and I'm going to name it Skybox Tutorial and say Create. Before we start, if you're new to Unity, you should go watch this tutorial I made which introduces you to the Unity interface and then you can come back and pick up where we left off. First thing we'll do is go to Window, Layouts, and change it to the default layout so this looks the same for everyone. In order to bring our scene into here, we need to download the Poly Toolkit. To do that, we'll go to the Asset Store, and in the search bar, we'll type Poly Toolkit. And it should be the first one here. So this is free, you just have to download and import it, and then confirm the import. So now that the toolkit has finished installing, you'll see that there's this error down here that says we need to enable unsafe code, which sounds kind of scary, but it's not. So we'll go to edit and then project settings. And then under the player settings here, we can scroll down under other settings to allow unsafe code right here. And we will say yes. After a moment, Everything will lock into place, this error will go away, and the poly, there it is, poly tab will show up. And now we have this poly window with an introduction window. We could just close this one down because this is the only one we care about. So now we can see all these sketches that other people have uploaded to poly from either uh, Tilt Brush or from Google Blocks, and we can download any of these into our scene. But we are interested in our own sketch right now. So to get our sketch, we have to go sign in by pressing this. It'll open up a window and you'll have to do your usual Google sign in and then sign over your rights to Google. And then you can go back to Unity. So now we're all signed in. Uh, under show, we can go down to our uploads and there is our mountain we just uploaded. When we click it, we can now import it into our project. But before we do that, we want to turn off recenter because this will move our object away from the world origin. Turn that off and then say import into project. 
A lot of tilt brush sketches don't take that much time to download, but if you put a lot of detail into your mountain landscape, it could take up to a minute to import. Cool, so it says it was successful. We can say okay and then close our poly window. And at any time, if we want that window back, we just have to go up here to poly, then browse assets. I'll open up our scene view so we can see what's going on. And as of now, it's not in our scene and that's just because we have to drag and drop it into there. You'll notice that we got this error down here and I really don't know why this is here. It's never caused me a problem. So we can just go to our console and then say clear so we don't have to look at that anymore. So in our project, if we go down to poly, assets, we can see that our mountain landscape has imported successfully and we can drag and drop it into our hierarchy and now it's in our scene. But there's a few problems that we have to pan out first. So first of all, the mountain's colors aren't the same as they were in tilt brush. And this is because we use the matte hall brush, which responds to shading. So if we select the sun and we were to uh, rotate it around, we can see that it changes the lighting on the mountains. If we were to delete the sun, then it doesn't necessarily fix the problem. So we need to apply the unlit hall brush material to the matte hall brush objects. To do that, all we have to do is select our tilt brush object in the hierarchy and unroll it with this arrow. Now we can see all the brush strokes in our object organized by the brush type. So at the bottom, we can see the wire brush, the marker, double tapered, soft highlighter. And then it looks like we have a bunch of duplicates of the matte hall brush. These aren't duplicates. Unity just can't have that many polygons contained within one object. So when one object becomes too dense, it just splits it into two. Since our mountain range is really dense, it split it up into about 30 different objects. So normally what we would do is select these objects and then you can go into the inspector and see these settings to change the material. The problem is this one right here, and this is an artifact of Unity splitting up the asset. When we click this, we see that we no longer have these settings in the inspector window. And this is just because this is not an object, this is a group object. So if you unroll this, you can see that there are brush strokes inside of this, but this isn't, this doesn't contain brush strokes, if that makes sense. Get over there! All we have to think about is selecting all these matte hall brushes, but then we just have to control deselect the group object. And we can see that all our settings are back. And you may not even have this. This is just an artifact that appears every now and then. So what we need to do is look at the materials here and we can see that we have the matte hall material selected and we can see a preview of how that renders in a scene. So if we select this little dot here, in the search we can type unlit hall and we can select it. And now we can see that this is unlit, there isn't any shading in the scene, and if I was to close this and click away from our mountains, we now have the right colors back. The problem still is the sky. We don't have the same skybox, and that's because Tilt Brush doesn't export out its skybox. We have to create this on our own. So there is two ways of doing this. We could right click in our projects window, go to create, and then create a new material. Oops, where, material. <laughs> we'll name this Skybox, Skybox Pro for procedural. Now with this material selected, we can see all our settings in the inspector window, but there's nothing in here that tells us anything about a skybox. So we need to go to shader, down to skybox and change it to procedural. So now if I change these settings, we can see in our preview down here that is changing the sky, but it's not changing in our scene view. And that's because we have to assign this material to our scene. To do that, we need to go to window, rendering, lighting settings, and now we have all of these settings, which include environmental settings, lighting settings, and if you wanted to replicate any fog you had in your tilt brush scene, we have fog settings. So I usually grab this window and dock it over by our inspector. If we go to the top, we can see that there's this skybox material slot. When I select it, it doesn't actually select anything in the scene, even though it's highlighting our assets. And that's because the default skybox material is not editable. So we need to just take the new skybox we made and drag and drop it into that slot. 
and now you can see it changes and we have full control over the skybox. So if I just select this, now we can change those settings. The thing is, the procedural skybox is a realistic skybox generator, and so we can't necessarily match the same thing we had in Tilt Brush. Like, this isn't going to allow us to set the sky specifically to orange and the bottom to another color. You can change the, the tint and the atmospheric thickness and all, but it's pretty imprecise practice. So I'm going to undo everything I just did. What we'll want to do is change this to a different type of skybox. So we're, we're going to make a whole new material for this. So I'll say create material and I'll call it skybox texture. And this is going to be a textured skybox instead. And in the shader for this one, we'll go down to skybox and now panoramic. So now we can see there's a slot here for a texture. But we don't have any textures in our scene. If you wanted to, this is a time where you can go into Photoshop and make your own 360 image that you can place into this slot, but not everyone has Photoshop. So in the project files, I've included a set of skyboxes that you can bring into your project. So if you just go into the Unity Assets folder, there's a skybox presets folder. In here is a bunch of different skyboxes that you can play with. All you have to do is just drag and drop that folder into your Unity project and you're set to go. So now we have it in our project. What I'm going to do is take this skybox texture material and just drag and drop it into our presets so we have everything in one place. Now there's nothing magical about these skyboxes that I created. If I open this up a little bit so we can look at it, it's just a big rectangle that I made with the gradient tool. And I just made sure that the horizon was at the exact center of the image. So if you wanna make these yourself, you can do the same. Just make sure you have this horizon line at the 50% point of your image. And the resolution of these images is 8192 by 4096. So that's 8K and that's going to look really good in VR. Before we move on, we need to make sure that all of our skyboxes are set to the right quality settings. If you click on any of these, you can see that right now it's maxing our size at 2K when we want 4K. There's also a couple of other issues involved. So if I was to go to our lighting settings and I apply our new skybox texture to our settings, you can see we have a blank scene. Now if I click our skybox texture and apply one of these skyboxes to that input, it looks, you can see all these lines in the sky and when I look straight up, you can see this line and this circle here. If we want to get rid of those, we have to select our skyboxes. So which one did I use here? Skybox 9. So I'll do Skybox 9, and then we need to change the max size to 8K, so it's higher quality. You want to make sure that your format is at automatic and your compression quality at high quality. And this generate mid-map setting is the reason we see this line here. So when you turn this off, the line will go away after we say apply. And this little circle that you see comes from the warp mode. So if we change this to clamp and now say apply, the quality should improve, the line should go away, and the circle should be fixed. There we go. So everything worked out. Now before we move on, we should definitely do this to all the skyboxes so we can easily play around. So I'll just do that really quick. Now that all of our skyboxes have finished updating, we can play around with adding them to the texture slot of our skybox material. So if we select our skybox, we could then grab any of our textures and place it in the slot to see what it looks like. I created all these black and white skyboxes, so you can go into the tint property up here and then apply your own color to the skybox. So with this, we could make our own blue sky or purple sky or whatever you want. If you look up towards the top of the sky, you can see that it's not too dark right now, but if I was to pull in this darker black and white texture, it darkens the whole thing up. So it's just, it's all personal preference. What's cool is that if I reset these to normal, if I take this, this one here, this blue and red skybox texture and place it in the slot, it looks like a realistic sky because I pulled these colors from an actual image but you can go into the tint color and morph this. So you just set a little bit of saturation to it, and now you can make this blue and red sky a purple and red sky, whatever you want. 
For this tutorial, I'm going to use this Skybox 2 because this is going to closely match the Skybox that we had in Tilt Brush. So I'll just drag and drop that in and now I'm going to pull a orange color like the one we had in our scene. So I'm going to look at our clouds and try to match this color with the clouds. For the purpose of this video, this is fine. Now, the ground is really dark right now, but this is not something you should worry about at all because when we add in our foreground elements, it's going to completely block the ground. So that is just there so we have a sense of where the floor is. Now we can get to actually recording this into a 360 image. In order to do that, we need to select our camera and then press F to view it in the scene. If we look over at the camera settings, you can see that some of the numbers are off. So we need to right click the transform and say reset. And now it's at the center of our scene where we started our scene in Tilt Brush. If you look at the camera preview or in the game view, you can see that it's clipping into the ground. So I need to press W to get the move tool and then move it above the ground just slightly. If, you're, if you go above four or five in here, then that's going to start showing some weird results in the 360 image. So I'd recommend just lifting it up to one. Now to export this out, we have to use the Unity Recorder, which you can usually find in the window and general settings, but it's not there right now because we have to install it from the package manager. So open the package manager and it's a beta feature. So we need to go to advanced and show preview packages. And then once that loads in, we can go into the search bar and type Unity Recorder and it should pop up right away. So we just say install. With that installed, we can close out of this window and then go back to window, general, and recorder should now be there. We'll just open the recorder window. This is a dockable window, so I usually put it right here next to our scene and then open up our game view. Now the way the recorder works is every time you say start recording, it starts the play mode in Unity and records directly from the camera that you have targeted. You have to add which kind of recorder you want, whether it be an animation clip, movie, image sequence, or GIF, but we want an image sequence, so we'll select that. This setting up here says that it will exit play mode after it's done doing the manual record mode. That means that if I say record right now, it will just keep on recording in play mode until I say stop. But we can switch this down to single frame, which will allow us to export one image, our 360 image, and once that's exported, it will exit play mode and stop recording. The playback speed at constant just means it will play at a constant rate of 30 frames per second or whichever frame rate you choose here. But this is fine since we're only doing one frame. For the format, we want to switch this up to PNG so we have a higher quality image. And then for the file name, you can name it whatever you want. I'll just say mount skybox. And I usually do an 01 because this is an iterative process. So we're going to come back in and make another one later that we'll name 02. For the path, you can place it anywhere you want, but I'll be placing it in the Skybox Exports folder so you can view this on your own. And then the take number just records how many times you've gone through this process. It's not going to change the name of your file. For capture mode, it says it's going to capture the game view and it will match the window size. So that means it will capture this square right here. If I was to change this view into a 16 by nine view, it will now capture the game view here in a 16 by nine format but we don't want either of those. We want to change the capture to a 360 view. And now it's asking us the resolution we want. So we want our skyboxes to be an 8K, which is 8192 for the width and 4096 for the height. Then you could just copy and paste this into the cube map size. Stereo means the image is going to be 3D and we do not need that for a skybox. So we're just going to turn that off. And now everything should be ready to go. So after I press start recording, if I open up the folder and watch the play mode, when it stops, the file should appear. And there it is. So now if I double click this, we can see that sure enough, we now have a 360 image. So I can click into this or control zoom to see how detailed it is. And that really is extremely detailed for a 360 image. When we bring this back in the scene, it will look exactly like the scene we currently have. So to get this file into Unity, we just need to drag and drop it into our project. So I'll do that. And we need to apply the same settings to it as we did our custom skyboxes. So 8K, high quality, clamp, and turn off generate mid maps. 
apply. So since we don't need this procedural skybox anymore, I'm just going to rename it to skybox mount. And then we can go into the shader and make it a panoramic skybox with the open input for the texture. And now we can just drag and drop our mountain skybox onto that. And set our exposure to one. Just make sure that your tint color is set to 0, 0, 50, 50. Now, all we have to do is apply it to our scene. But what you can see is that it's not lined up. And now I'm going to move this recorder out of the way so we can have a full view of what we're looking at. Uh, something is off, and it, you can see one sun there and one sun there. And that's just because our skybox needs to be rotated 90 degrees. So if we just click into our material and go to rotation, we can set this to 90 degrees, and now it lines up. So you see some overlap there, and that's just because our 3D scene is in the way. If we just select our scene and press the check mark in the inspector, it goes away, and now we have an exported skybox in our Unity scene, and it looks exactly the same. If you would like to test this in VR, we can make a new camera. I'll name this VR camera, just so we know which one it is. That doesn't change any properties. And to enable VR, we have to go to Edit, Project Settings, and under Player Settings, down at the bottom, you can find the XR Settings. Then we could say Virtual Reality Supported, check, it'll think for a second, and it automatically has Oculus at the top for the provider for this, but we want to take the Open VR and slide it to the top so this works for any headset. Then we could just close out of this. And when we look at our cameras, we now have this new setting called target eye. And th that's because VR is made out of two screens. You have your left eye and your right eye. And then you have this option here for main display, which is just means it's non-VR. So for the VR camera, we want it to look at both eyes. But for our main camera, which is our recorder, we want to switch this to main display. Now, if I press play, it links up to my headset and I can look around our scene and yeah, I can confirm this looks exactly like the skybox we had in Tiltbrush. What I usually find when I do this exporting is that I like how it looks in Unity a lot better because it's just a lot cleaner and the skybox is usually a lot better. And that's the whole process of creating skyboxes out of Tiltbrush assets. The next step would be to create our foreground elements in Tiltbrush, but we're not going to go into that in this video. 